What's up, Badger fans? Welcome to the community edition of the Prospect Ranking List. These are the top 10 players in the 2024 class as voted by you, the listener. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I appreciate you listening so much. Thank you for being every day here. Thank you for being with us as we build this community. It means a lot to me. I put out a call for action a bit ago on Twitter, in the Discord. I said, rank your top 10 players in this class from 10 to 1 based on whatever metrics you want to use. You, you want to put a bunch of metrics together. You want to rank on upside, um, readiness to play, recruiting wins, position of need, uh, star rankings, whatever it is, all of the above. Give me it all. We'll throw it in a big mixing pot. We'll mix it together, pour it out, and then we'll get our community rankings, our first annual Locked On Badgers community ranking show. This is going to be the aggregate here. And it, how it works is simple, right? You vote for your top 10. Every time a player gets a, a first place vote, they get 10 points. Second place vote, nine points. Third place vote, eight points, and so on and so forth. I've got the results. We tallied it up. Let's do it. Let, let's let's look at the communities. And we got a bunch of results on this, a bunch of votes coming in on Discord, on Twitter, right? So I think this is a really good representation of a lot of smart Badger fans. And let's do it. Let's rank the top 10 players in this class. But I want to start with honorable mentions. These are all players that got votes but didn't quite crack the top 10. I want to start by saying this is a hard, hard friggin' list to put together for me. Because I, I legitimately wrestled with like 18 different guys. I, I My first list had, I think, had 18. 17, 18, 19 in that range. And I was like, ah, I want to find a way to put this guy in here and that guy. I couldn't do it. Like there, there's some guys are bedrock guys for me. Like I, I don't care. He's in the top 10. I don't care what I got to do. I got a handful of those guys. And then it was tough. It was tough to mix people in. So here's my, not my, here's the top 10. This is the honorable mentions right here. So let's start at number 17, getting the Tuca did not make the top 10, but did get a boat. Um, I like him a lot. I've talked about it. I, I He was not in my top 10, but I like getting a Tuca a lot. I think he's is very underrated. He gets overshadowed by the other guys, but he doesn't quite have the physical tools of those guys. Number 16 is Rob Booker. Rob Booker got a couple votes. He was listed on 4% of the ballots that we received. I think I kind of wonder if he had stayed with the Badgers the whole time, if he would have gotten more love. Now, Rob Booker did not make my top 10, but I did consider him because I think the upside is is really interesting. But he, he was a little outside my top 10 as well, but he did get a couple votes. Number 15, y'all are killing me. I, I love y'all, man. I, I really do. I love y'all. You, Cor, Ryan Corey is not – he's got to be higher. I'm sorry. Like, I got Corey in my top 10. I got him at 7 on my list. Um, he makes 15 on the community list, listed on 21% of votes, with a high vote of number 7 in the class. That was my vote. I think he's – man, I think he's so good. Uh, and people I've talked to really like him. I think he's just kind of typecast as an inside guy, which hurts the recruiting ranking. Again, there's no right or wrong answers on this, right? We're we're all throwing our opinions out there, and recruiting is a bit of a crapshoot anyway. But I, y'all are killing me. Ryan Corey should be higher than 15. Uh, number 14 is Raphael Dunn. Raphael Dunn was listed on 17% of the ballots. He did get a couple votes, um, top five. She got a, a number four vote on one ballot. Rafael Dunn is definitely, I mean, if you were going to do a list of the top five intriguing guys, which mental, mental cabinet opening up, put that file in there. I I probably will do some type of list on, I want to do like almost attribute lists. Like who are the most top five intriguing guys? Dunn's on that list, right? Because there's just not many, I already, I talked about him already. We did kind of the recap. He's six, five guy in the secondary. That's super intriguing. Uh, But I think he's a little raw and I I still think there's a little bit of a, we're not a hundred percent sure what he's going to look like and how the body's going to fill out. And there's some tweener potential there i like him a lot but he i got i didn't have him in the top 10 he's 14 on the, the honorable mentions number 13 was kion barry johnson so that's an interesting one right so when you look at when i actually look at the distribution of votes kion barry johnson had a first place vote on a ballot like you know, people that's one of the more polarizing prospects in this class when you look at how people voted like there are people he was on ranked on several lists like he was ranked on 34 percent of the list so a lot of people left him off i didn't have him on my top 10 because i, I just I just wonder how his game is going to play a little bit against the bigger competition, the better competition in college. I really like him. He was definitely in my initial list of, man, I got to whittle this down. Like he he's, I really like him, but like I said, he was polarizing. He had a first place vote on the, on this ranking. So definitely some people really in on him. Some people not as in on him, but he finished uh, number 13 on the honorable mentions. 
Number 12, Grant Stack. That was a really hard. So Grant Stack did not make my top 10. It was really hard for me to leave Grant Stack off my top 10. I'll just say that because I think I tried to factor in a lot of things, right? I tried to factor in upside, readiness, floor, ceiling, uh, recruiting rankings, film. I, I, I tried to throw as much of it together as I could. And I just think his floor is so doggone high. Like he's he's gonna play and he's gonna be a really good tight end. I think I I now I'm almost talking myself into revamping my list and getting Steck on there. I it was hard for me to leave Grant Steck off. So Grant Steck was listed on 52 percent of the the fan ballots that came in. 52 percent of y'all had him in the top 10. I was part of that 48 percent that did not, but it broke my heart because I really like him as a prospect. I, I think there's a ton of good there with Grant Steck, and I think it's reflective again of how good this class, how deep this class is, right? I think. You could have, I should have maybe done a top 15 countdown instead of cutting it at top 10. But Grant Steck does finish at 12th. He did have a couple fourth place votes. You know, so a couple of guys not only had him in the top 10, had him in the top four. I think that's totally fair. I think you can absolutely make that argument for Grant Steck. And number 11, another one. <clears throat> another one like Ryan Corey. Y'all got to have Anelu Lafayette in the top 10. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I think. I, and I'm just I'm just having fun with people, right? People would look at my list and say the same thing. Like, how do you not have this guy in the top 10? I'm just poking fun. Like, there's a lot of good players in this class. I had Anelu Lafayette at number four. Um, I, I just think if you have an edge presence, that athletic who has been that productive from, a, you know, started at a big-time power at school, had offers from both staffs, to me, it's just kind of a rare prospect. I think what it is partially, just partially with Lafayette is he he committed early and you lose some of the buzz. When, I kind of wonder what this ranking would look like. And maybe it wouldn't be different. I'm not trying to insinuate people aren't doing homework whatsoever. And I could be way off on my list. Like I said, my list is just my list. That doesn't make it the right one. Um, but I kind of wonder if people be more jazzed about him if he recruited late, right? If you want a late battle with the Nelu Lafayette, are people like, oh, head rusher, let's go. I think there's a little bit of that. If you recur, rec, or commit early, the buzz kind of wears off a little bit. I think he's a stud. And having talked to him, man, that dude is wired like Herbig. Like, no no surprise, right? Like, that's one of his mentors. That's a guy who helped get him to Wisconsin. He's wired to be a maniac on the football field. I, I like the physical tools. I like the explosion. I think he brings unique athleticism. Um, like I said, I had him on fourth on my list. So before we get into the top ten, that is the honorable mentions. And, again, this is a really good class. And there's guys not even in the honorable mention I really like. Like Derek Jensen's a dude I really like. Um, he was in, kind of in my initial top 18. Let's see, there, um, Colin Coverley is a guy I like. Jay, Jay Harper's a guy. I, I love Jay Harper's game. He was in my mix of, God, how do I get him into the mix too? Jay Harper, a lot of years I've mentioned, would be the, our most exciting cornerback in a class. Like this is, it's just a tough list. There's some real good dudes that just didn't quite crack the code here, um, but it doesn't mean they're bad players, right? All right, let's let's get into this. So again, the honorable mentions: Gideon with seventeen, Booker sixteen, Corey fifteen, Dunn fourteen, KBG thirteen, Steck twelve, Lafayette eleven. Steck and Lafayette were the two guys that were listed on over fifty percent of the ballots. All right, we're gonna take a quick break, then we're gonna start breaking down the top ten community ranked prospects in order. Again, according to you, these are the best prospects in this class. Take a quick break. Get back with our friends of the show. Um, but get, take a quick break. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at eBay Motors. eBay Motors is the number one place to find all your car parts, everything you need. Uh, listen, I've talked about it. I don't want to walk into Auto Trader or like any other, any of us, no shade any, but I don't want to walk in and try to like talk to somebody who may not have the right parts in the warehouse and they don't really want to be there. And they're like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, just give me a part. And he's like, what type of engine you got, bro? And I'm like, I don't know, man. This is hard. I'm not a car dude. eBay Motors simplifies it, right? You just, Get your info, input it. It shows you the parts you need. Get shipped to you. I don't get it. have to get out of my footy pajamas. It's all good. That's what eBay Motors has done. With over 122 million parts, they have everything you could possibly need for your ride. There's a reason why I go to eBay Motors. Everything from roof racks, exhaust kits, turbochargers, uh, rims, everything you could possibly need. The, the correct lights and headlights, it's all there on eBay Motors. Because with eBay Motors, man, you're burning rubber. You're not burning cash. With all the parts at the prices you need, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. eBay Motors, go there. Um, use ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Motors Spit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, let's, let's keep breaking down our top 10 here. Let's keep breaking down our top 10. Let's get into – so we did the 
honorable mentions. Let's go number 10 on this list, Emerson Mandel. He, he's the just mauling guard. Right? I love Emerson Mandel. Um, for, for full disclosure, he was actually number 10 on my list. So this is a spot where I completely agree with the community. I love Mandel. I, Mandel was a hard one for me to rank because – if it all clicks with him, he could be a top five player in this class, but we don't know if he can pass block. Like we haven't really seen it, right? We've just seen the powerhouse run blocking where he just demolishes people. You know, competition hasn't been great. That's another thing. It's just hard. A, it's hard to evaluate offensive linemen in general. It's harder when you don't see them pass block. And it's harder, harder when they're not always playing really consistently good competition. So Mandel's a hard one. He's easy to dream on though. Right, he's he's easy to watch the film and say, man, there could be a lot under that hood that Jack McNell could unlock. So, I've got him at ten. The community had him at ten uh, with Manziel. He was listed on fifty six percent of the ballots. He had a high mark of two. You know, there were a couple of people that had him at, as the second best class, our second best prospect in this class. So, there's definitely another like KBJ. There's a lot of varied opinions on Emerson Mandel. Number nine, we got Dylan. Johnson. That's a great one. That's again, this is weird. I have him at nine as well. So this is another spot. And believe me, my list in the community's list are about to diverge, but I had Dylan Johnson at number nine as well. I just think again, the floor is so high with him, right? Cause what do you have to project? You don't have to project competitiveness. He's a three time state wrestling champion. Like you don't do that unless you're a competitive SOB and you're tough as tough as old school nails. Like that guy is a beast. He's 290, 295. Like, you don't have to project can he carry weight. He's got good film. Like, he got a late recruiting bump. Like, I just think he's such an easy prospect to see the path to success. A lot of prospects, you have to, you almost have to squint to see the path to success. Like, uh, what if he puts on 20 pounds? Or are you squinting? You're like, uh, I don't know. Maybe he'll look better in this system. Or are you squinting? Say, uh, I don't know. Maybe if he gets healthy, you don't got to squint on anything with Dylan, right? You, 2020 vision, you see it clearly. He's, he's a really good physical developed prospect who is wired the right way. I, I like him a lot. I am at number nine. The community had him number nine. Great job, community. Number eight, Kevin Haywood. This was another one that was really polarizing. For as highly ranked as Kevin Haywood is, he was he's finished eighth on this list. Um, 78% of people had him on the ballot, so he was not on 20% of the ballots. He did have a high watermark of um, two. For full disclosure, he wasn't, I didn't have him in my top 10. He was absolutely one of those guys I stressed about. Like, how do I get Kevin Haywood in here? I love the physical tools. It just came down to some of this to me was position of need. I, not that we don't need tackles. I just feel like it's easier to get those at Wisconsin. So if that's not Kevin Haywood's fault whatsoever, but I feel like internally I dinged him a little bit just because I don't feel like that's a super difficult place for us to find talent. And again, I said, use whatever metrics you want. Part of my metrics were position and need, like the type of guys we need to get to the next level. And I think I gave a few people a bump because then, and not penalized Haywood, but didn't give him a bump. He's really good. But again, there were, outside of me, there were 22% of other people that left him off their ballots as well. I'd be interested in knowing why, because he is a four-star guy, one of the higher ranked prospects in the class. And again, he had multiple votes at number two as well. So this is definitely a player a lot of people were really high on, but he finishes at number eight in our ranking. So out of the top 10 at number 10, it was Emerson Mandel, number nine, Dylan Johnson, number eight, Kevin Haywood. So the trenches represent early on this Badgers list at number seven. I love this guy. I love this guy. We got Thomas Heiberger, right? I, I feel like when he committed, he, he went from a guy like, Oh yeah, they like him. And now Badger fans are like, Oh yeah, we like him. Having talked to the staff, I talked to some people on staff, they really like him. Like, I think he's going to play. I already said it. He's going to play special teams this year. I'd be, I'd be very surprised if he didn't. He's just so physically gifted that you almost, he, again, he's like, we, we use baseball analogies. Let's use a basketball analogy. You know, he, he's kind of like that guy a team gambles on in the mid to late lottery that, that needs some developing. Maybe he played <clears throat> overseas. Is, is a little hard to evaluate him, but his physical skills are so good that you just have to take the shot. You have to buy that lottery ticket and scratch that lottery ticket and scratch it off. That's that's Heiberger. Like his physical skill, he's he's probably the most physically gifted player in this class. Period. I, I'll say it. Like he is probably the most physically gifted player in this entire recruiting class. There, there's guys you can put up there with them, but a, a 39 inch vertical is is insane. Like that that's nuts. That's that's crazy factory stuff. That that's elite NBA athleticism. 
with that wingspan and that reach, uh, running a four six, it's just unreal how athletic he is and how good he could be at that ceiling. And we're talking like first round havoc inducing outside linebacker if everything comes together, right? Oftentimes it doesn't. I'm not trying to like pump the hot air balloons here. Oftentimes everything doesn't come together, but most people don't have those type of tools. Most people don't have that ceiling in them. So he finishes number seven on this list impressively listed on 86% of your ballots. That's the third highest in this entire group. So even though he's seventh overall, he was consistently in every top 10 outside of a couple. And I think it's because everybody's buying into the athleticism and the tools and they should. Why wouldn't you? So listed on 86% of ballots, he was listed, a high water mark for him was number three. So multiple people had him as the third best prospect in this class. I had him at six. But there was no way, there was no way he wasn't going to be in my top 10. Um, I think he's like he's got a, he's a little raw. He hasn't played the best talent, but he had him at six. The community had him at seven. His high water mark was three. And again, he was the third most ranked player in this class, like consistently on just about every ballot. Really, really impressive. I love Thomas Heiberger. Um, number six. Let's go down to number six. Xavier Lucas. And I, full disclosure, I had him at two. I, I, I was, I made no bones about it, man. I love, I love Lucas's game. And there's, by the way, he is a six one. Not that I need to repeat. I've talked about it. We all know that we all know the details here. You just don't get six one corners that can run like him and have the ball skills that he does. He's an NFL type prospect at corner. And everybody I've talked to, I've talked to Brian Smith. I've talked to some other people. They love him. There, there's a reason Wisconsin got in on him, stayed after him, and fought tooth and nail for Miami. There's a reason Miami got back in on him. He's really good. I got him at number two. He was ranked on 82% of the ballot. Shame on the 18% of you that did not rank Xavier Lucas in your top 10. Um, he was listed at number two by a couple different people, so not just me. Or number two, yeah, number two by a couple different people. So, yeah, uh, he finishes six in this recruiting class composite per the community. Uh, number five is Emilio Agard. So uh, listed on 78% of the ballots. His high water mark was number two. Yeah, I love Agard too. I, I had Agard at eight, so I did have Agard in my top 10. That makes back to back cornerbacks as well. Agard is the highest ranked per the community cornerback in this class, right ahead is right ahead of Xavier Lucas. Love his game. Like him and Lucas, again, I had Lucas higher on my ranking. I think it's partially just because I like the size. I like the I like the ability to be a little more versatile, whereas Agard is going to be a little vertically challenged in spots, but both these are big time gets with big time offer lists, a lot of talent. Yeah, so I got I got Agard, a community at Agard at five. I had him at eight. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to recap and then get the top four prospects ranked in this class by the community. Again, to recap the top 10, uh, number 10 was Emerson Mandel. Number nine was Dylan Johnson. Number eight was Kevin Haywood. Number seven was Thomas Heiberger. Number six was Xavier Lucas. Number five was Emilio Agard. So two offensive linemen, defensive linemen, linebacker, and two corners. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk about the final group of prospects in this list. And I'm going to tell you where I agree and disagree with the community. Coming up next on Lockdown Badgers, let's go. But first, I do want to say, again, happy holidays to everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate y'all. You guys are amazing. And let's keep it going. All right, coming back to the show, the number four prospect per the community list. Again, ranking every player in this class. I told you to find me, tell me your top 10. Number four is Darian Dupree. Um, so Darian Dupree was listed on 82% of the ballots. So still almost 20% of people, this surprised me a little bit. I'm surprised almost 20% of people didn't have Darian Dupree on their ballots, but then I, I gotta be honest, I had him at 10, right? So yeah, maybe I'm kind of in that group where that's a little lower in Dupree. And when I say lower, it's not even, it's not even lower. Like I don't like him. Like he's, he's really good. And a lot of athleticism, big time offer list had to fend people off for him. It might be a little bit of the offensive line situation where I just think they have an easier job finding talent at running back. And I, I kind of bumped up some of the, the more difficult positions a little bit higher because of that. I also just think Dylan Jones is more complete. I think he's the more complete back. And I kind of wonder if Dupree is a little bit, a little bit of a project, not, pro, not project guy, but a little bit of a guy that you have to find spots for him. I don't know. I love the film. Like he's explosive. He catches the ball. He did have um, multiple people on this list listing at number one. So we've reached the first prospect that got first place votes. <clears throat> Multiple people had Darian Dupree at the very top of the list saying that's the best prospect in this list. And I can see the argument because if it comes together for him, 
he he could be just an explosive um what's a good comp i don't even know a great comp i've said before like a a dairy a dari ogbowale type of a guy at wisconsin who people might initially be like ah, that that's an nfl dude like dari played like six seven years in the league like he's a great player um and he could be a little better than dari which would be like a six seven eight year nfl guy that's a win every time that's a five-star talent if you get to that point so I like him a lot. I had him at 10 on my list. The community has him at four. Number three. Now we get into kind of that that top trio. And I'm curious, I'll pause for a second in your head. Like, like think who do you think is in the top and how are they ranked? Um, and again, this is this was tough, man. This was a very tough list to put together because there's a lot of talent in this class. <clears throat> and depending on what metric you're looking at, you can go a couple different ways. Uh, let's get into number three. Number three on this list is that dude, Dylan Jones. So you go running back, back to back on this community list. I made no bones about it. Like I had Dylan Jones at number three on mine. So this is the third time that my pro my personal list has agreed with the community. He's a, I love him. I love his film. I love his all around game. I think he's one of the more complete all around backs that Wisconsin has gotten in a long time. I think he runs between the tackles incredibly well. He's fluid. He's athletic. He's he's gotten a little bigger. I think he has enough speed. He's not a burner, but he definitely has enough speed. He can catch the ball. He's been well coached. Uh, having talked to both him and his head coach, I came away. And that might be a little unfair too, right? Some players I get to talk to, some of the head coaches I get to talk to, some I don't. It's certainly possible I have an affinity for them just because I've learned more about them. That's that's a bias. And I, you know, we all have biases, right? If you don't admit your biases, then that's a bias. So that's certainly possible, but... <clears throat> I, I can't tell you how impressed I was talking to both him and his coach. Like, very impressive. I think he's wired the right way. I think he understands what he needs to do. And I think he can play in a lot of different situations. So I had Dylan Jones at three. The community had him at three. He was listed on 95% of ballots. So there's some, there's a couple of people out there that didn't have him in the top 10 in this class. I don't agree with that, but it's out there. Uh, he had multiple people list him at number one as well. So an another player like Darren Jabri, who multiple people said, I think that's the best guy in this class. And now you get to number two, Mabry Mentor. Uh, is the community's number two prospect in this class, listed on 91% of the ballots. Who's not putting Mabry Mettoyer in their top 10? Um, again, no hate on that. Everyone's opinion is valid here. I had him at number one for, for fair disclosure. I, I think he's the number one player in this class because he's a quarterback, right? Now, not every quarterback is automatically number one, but if you get a quarterback with his physical tools, to me, that's not, because there's there's no other player in this class, if they hit their ceiling, can match what maybe Metoyer can do if he hits his ceiling. It's not even close. And that's true for all really good quarterbacks because they're, they're just force multipliers. They, they raise the entire level of the team, whereas a great defensive lineman, a great running back, a great cornerback, they don't do that. I mean, it's no disrespect. It just is what it is. It's why quarterbacks make three times as much as running backs in the NFL. It's why they make three times as much as everybody in the NFL, right? So to me, Mabry is number one. He's number two on this list, listed on 91% of the ballots. I think one of those might be because from a certain person who has an affinity to Cole LaCrue, um, just maybe. But I love I love Mabry. I made no bones about it. He's number two on this list. And that gets you to Ernest Willer Jr., Jr., who is number one on this list, the only player – in this entire class, this entire voting exercise that was listed on every single ballot, he was listed on 100% of the ballots. Ernest Willard Jr. obviously had multiple number one votes. I had him at five on my list. Just for full disclosure, I had him at five. I just think a few, like, again, I have the quarterback higher. I have um, Lucas higher. I had Lafayette higher. I don't know. I I like Ernest. Again, this is a great pickup. Not, not Having him in five in this class is not a bad thing. That means you still really, really like him. But the community had him at one overall, and I get it. I it, stud defense alignment, position of need, highest ranked recruit, big recruiting win. I 100% get it. Like that's that's a guy you needed to get. You need to get a guy like him, not necessarily him, but you needed to get a guy like him in this class. They did it. So he finishes at number one. Let's recap this. My top, our, our top 10 per voting, per the community 10, Emerson Mandel, nine, Dylan Johnson, eight, Kevin Haywood, seven, Thomas Heiberger, six, Xavier Lucas, five, Emilio Agard. Number four, Darren Dupree. Number three, Dylan Jones. Number two, Mabry Mettoyer. Number one, Ernest Willard Jr. Who are the who are the people that you think are being most slept on after seeing this kind of community aggregate list? I already mine's already Ryan Corey. Like I told you, I have him in my top ten. I think he's been slept on from the jump. I think partially because he's an offensive lineman, partially because he kind of recruited and went quiet. He's mine. Tell me who you think is the the most 
the most slept on after seeing this list. Again, I, the other thing you take away from this, you look at who, the top, look at the top five, right? If you look at that top five, it's a defense alignment, a quarterback, a couple running backs, and a corner. Like corner, quarterback, defense line. The top five is not offensive linemen. Um, I think that's impressive because Wisconsin's going to do okay on the offensive line. I, I'm telling you, almost no matter what, they're going to be okay to to good, and and hopefully they can get better than that. But if you if your top five recruiting list at Wisconsin has a, a defense lineman and a quarterback in it and a corner, I'm just saying those are good signs, right? Those are really good signs for Wisconsin. It's good signs going forward because those are the positions you desperately need. A couple things I disagree with on this community ranking. I've already talked about Ryan Corey. I think Ryan Corey should be higher. That obviously begs the question of who needs to be lower. It's not fair for me just to say, well, he needs to be higher. Well, Ryan, who needs to be lower? You look at that top 10. Um, again, I was a little lower on Darian Dupree than consensus. I was a little lower on Kevin Haywood than the consensus. So those are a couple guys that I would potentially move down just a tick. I love their film. I, I, I mean, both of them, but I would maybe move them down just a tick. I still had daring to bring my top 10, but yeah, it's tough. Like I said, it's tough. Um, Lafayette would be my top 10. Lafayette would be my top 10 as well. If we're going to kind of say really what we agree, what we disagree on, but that's where I'm at on this. That's the community list. Thank you for sending your, your submissions in. We're going to do this every year. I really do appreciate it on Wisconsin. Thank you all so much. Let's go.